Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Fallen. And this is going to be a very interesting, very different run through than what I normally do because I am joined by a special guest host, Jason Hancock. Say hello, Jason. Hey Rado, how's it going? It is going fine, thanks. Thank you very much for getting up early. Jason got, has rolled straight out of bed to do this with me today because as it happens, Jason was one of my Kickstarter backers last year at a level that let him choose a game that he would like to co-host with me. And when he found out that I was going to be doing a run through of Fallen, which he's a fan of, he said, well, I would like to talk about that too. And so Jason is here. A little bit about him first. Jason actually does his own podcast, which is Docking Bay 94, the reviewer's podcast. Um, and I, Jason, why don't you tell us a little bit about, about it? Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh uh, talk about have different guests on. I have about nine episodes out. We've been doing it since January, February. Um, different media, board game media. Um, Tiffany, uh, we had different uh, publishers, designers, just whoever wants to come on, talk about the creative process and how they do it, why they do it, what they use to do it for kind of help other people who are interested in doing oh. it. And, and each episode is one interview with one person or a group of people talking about the process of making videos or making games or whatever it is they make. Yep, exactly. Cool. Yep, they're on for the whole hour and a half, two hour-ish uh, time frame talking about Kickstarter and whatever, whatever floats our boat. And speaking of Kickstarter, you also do a weekly blog on Board Game Geek. Um, no, that uh, troll, on Troll in the Corner. On okay. Troll in the Corner. Yeah. Called okay. Kick the Box. Right, called Kick the Box on Troll in the Corner, and that one you basically just do a spotlight on the the big Kickstarter events of the week uh, uh, that you have found, right? Um, that or it's more of four four highlights that I would back if I was filthy rich, you know, and could back four projects every week. You know, stuff that interests me that I think other people might find interesting, whether it's a big thing or it might be some little thing there that's like, hey, that looks cool. I want to highlight that and hopefully generate one or two people that. To go to it. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, links to both of that stuff is you know down below in the show notes to your to your podcast and to your blog. But we are not here to talk about you today. We're here to talk about Fallen. It has been very patient. Let's get going. All right. So I will get this out of the way. So now um, this is a two player and two player only game where one player is the vile. Dungeon Lord bent on you know destroying all hope in the world, and the other player is the stalwart hero who is going to save the day. And today I will be the vile Dungeon Lord, and Jason will be our steadfast hero. We'll see how well he does if I can destroy him or not. <laughs> uh, let's see. Now, as part of setup, and we've already gone ahead and done the setup ahead of time. I'm going to actually pan down now so you can kind of see what's going on here. This is Jason. Jason is, in fact, Seroth. The pit fight. Let me go on ahead and get this a little bit closer to the camera. Let's see. <laughs> Jason, is this, is this viewable? Can you see it okay? Yep, I can see it perfect. Okay, cool. Right. So this is Jason. He is the tough guy. I mean, there's also a, you know, a wizardy character and a thievy character and a, oh, what was the other character? I don't remember. The, it's like another fightery type character. Oh, the, well, there's, there's four characters coming to the game. We're playing the fightery one. And he has a special ability, Crushing Blow, and has several stats that, you know, determine whether, I'm sure, I haven't looked at it yet, yeah, obviously you're going to be strong in, yeah, you are strongest in the ways of strength. You get to roll three dice. You mm -hmm. are okay in the ways of agility. You get to roll two dice. And you're dumb as a post. You don't get to roll any di extra dice for mental challenges. So. Yeah. And you also get to start with some starting equipment. You have an iron sword, leather armor, and a torch, which you'll be able to use over the course of the adventure. On the back is, you know, set up specifics about him and also a little bit of backstory, which we will not go into today, but I'm sure he's had a rich and storied history being the uh, world's greatest pit fighter. Now, right. also, as part of setup, before we started, Jason had to choose whether Seroth was going to be a titan, a tactician, or have some weapons training. These are all level one skills. He had to pick one level one skill, and he chose Titan, which means he, it enhances his strength even more. You know, he could have chosen Tactician, and that would have helped out his book smarts a little bit, but he said, nah, uh, yeah, I like him dumb. <laughs> and so he does get a power when you learn, oh, so when he learned this skill, he immediately gained one extra fortune. Now, normally, we start out with five fortune at the beginning of an adventure, but because you're a titan, you're starting with six, correct? Mm -hmm. right. right, correct. 
Yep, all right, so here is your six fortune you've got. You also have your three charges in place so that you can use your crushing blow whenever you would like. So uh -huh. that's it. We're set up there. And now, meanwhile, I will be the evil Forge Master. Right? That's one of several characters I could have been. I could have been the Archivist of Souls or the, the Ogre King or whatnot. Now, I also have a special power. What is it? It's I can reforge. I, have to, I haven't played this character before, but Jason said, hey, he's a good one. So if it turns out lousy, it's Jason's fault. <laughs> By the way, for the record, any goofs made in this video, Jason's fault. Paula, Always. I, I would like that pointed out in the annotations. Any goofs, totally Jason's fault. All right. So I've got a couple different powers, and it's interesting. One of my powers is you know getting extra dice, which I can do whether the world is sunny or gloomy. And then I've got another power, which I can only use when the world is gloomy. And what does that mean, the world is gloomy? Well, you'll notice there's this track over here that leads from brilliant to luminous, to glowing, to clouded, to dusk, to night. And this kind of represents the player's, uh, well, you know, the, the state of the world. Is the world going into darkness or light? And if it's going towards light, that's going to help out Jason more than it's going to help out me, obviously, because it'll unlock special powers for him as well. You know, actually, if I, if I pull his card back up, you can see that when things are good and it's sunny, he gets two red dice, which are much more powerful dice. When things are gloomy, he gets two blue dice, which are weaker dice. So there's kind of like a little tug of war that's going on here between the forces of good and evil. And we are about to find out, as part of setup, how the world is going to start out. Because the first thing we're going to do is, let me scroll back up to me. Hi, everybody. It's story time. That's what this game is all about. This is a choose-your-own-adventure fused with a um, you know, dice-chucking dungeon crawl. And so the game comes with a whole bunch. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jason. I think it's around 30 adventure cards, right? I think Something it's like 30 that. or 35 on the retail. I believe so. Yeah. Yep, so you're around 30, 35, each one of them has several different encounters on both sides. So what, what we're going to do is I already, before we started playing, I chose one of the, this is going to be the first of three adventure cards that Jason is going to have to go through. But before he finds out what that is, and I've got this little special shield so that when I'm playing and I can be reading stuff to him, he can't see because these are all two-sided. We don't want him to be able to see that kind of stuff. So I've got this little shield so he can't see what I'm reading to him. But I'm not going to read that to him. Remember, I am the Forge Master. The first thing we're going to have to do is, let's meet the Forge Master. Okay, because there's a little bit of a story on the back of the card. Sorry for the glare, folks. It's yeah. Sunny Malta. All right, <laughs> but um, I'll just go ahead and read it. So, I'm going to tell you the story of the Forge of Pain. Dark rumors have spread that the people in the town of Ember Reach have disappeared. Travelers report that only empty homes and shops are left. Spiders with legs of metal have been spotted crawling out of the nearby woods. This can only be the vile work of the Forge Master. You must rescue the townsfolk before the Forge Master reassembles them into his own iron minions. And so, herein lies Jason's, or I should, sorry, I should say Seraph, the, fight pit, uh, the, the pit fighter's first choice. Jason, are you going to follow the iron spiders, or are you going to search the town? Well, considering I have no intelligence, I will go follow the uh, spiders. An excellent choice, and that is, yeah. you know, there are actually. This is more than just, you know, blind, you know, blind decisions or you yeah. know, story thematic. You do make decisions based on what your strengths and weaknesses are, and over the course of the game, you could become stronger in different things. Uh, you know, because your stats are strength, agility, and smarts, and you figure if you went to town, you probably wouldn't be smart enough to deal with whatever. Yeah. So you're just going to follow the spiders. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm glad you chose that uh, because. You easily track the spiders by the sound of their creaking metal legs. Deep within the forest, the creatures enter a cave, spewing forth caustic smoke. The forge of the Dungeon Lord is hard at work. Now, that means you get two additional fortune, which is nice, I suppose. So we'll yeah. give you two more. So you're actually starting out normally, in a normal round, you start out with five. But you start out with six because you're a titan, and then you start out with two more because you chose to follow my spidery minions. However, the shadow track, the state of the world, is going to start in, oops, uh, da, 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 there we go. It's going to start in the clouded state. And now the rules say basically to mark what the state of the world is, you just take the one and you slide it out here. So, we're, But I have found when playing that it's easy to bump these around. So I'm just going to use one of Jen's little glass markers, one of these little dragons here, to indicate that the world is clouded. So, while Jason got a couple more fortune he can use, 
the world is favoring me because it's a dark and sinister place. So that's the situation. We are ready to go. And I'm going to come right back up here again. Hello again, everybody. So the storytelling continues. Jason has gone in. He, he went into the cave. And now the first thing I do is I pick randomly one of these, whatever it is, 30-some adventures. I've already picked one. It is called the Black Lake. Let's continue. You step into a massive cavern dominated by a murky black lake. The corridor you've come from empties out onto the stone wharf with eight homes built on it. This small community is long dead. No one has walked past these buildings for centuries. A light coming from a third-story tower up against the water catches your attention. Its front door is bolted from the inside. A boat sits in the smooth water of the lake next to the tower. Jason. Will you climb up to the window or will you row around to the back? That's interesting. Yeah. So as you were mentioning, I want to try to favor strength uh, as much as I can. Well, it takes a lot uh, of strength to row. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and who knows, you never know what's going to happen uh, either way. So let's go ahead and row, row. Row, 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 row. Your boat. Okay, row on your boat. You row, okay, row on the boat. Your boat disturbs the glassy water of the lake. You steer the craft around the back where a dock leads to a storeroom at the base of the tower. The sight of, the, of a dark shape moving under the boat pushes you to hurry along. And now we come to the gameplay. Story time is over. It is time to play the game now. What has happened here is you can actually see, um, you know, again, sorry for the uh, glare here. Jason chose row your boat. This is the little story I read. Here's the main thing. He chose this. And now Jason is going to have a strength test, which is right up his alley. In fact, he chose smartly. I don't know why I encouraged him to do that. I should have encouraged him <laughs> to climb the window because he would have had to do an agility test instead, which is not his strong suit. And it would have been a hard one. You can see there's that little uh, black square. He surely should if he'd climbed the tower. But, of course... You probably didn't choose to climb the tower because that's kind of obviously an agility-based thing. Agility right? kind of thing, yeah. yeah. Yep. Now, Jason, well, he, granted, he's been around the block a few times. Yeah, there's, well, and I was going to say, not all the story cards or all the little chooses are obvious. Right. You know, I mean, even that one wasn't totally obvious because you never really know what that next thing is. But, yeah, kind of, kind of try to feel the story and try to decide to benefit yourself. Yep. Or – you can just go with the story and whatever you want to do. Yeah, I mean, you can just go entirely based on role playing. Well, what would I do? And is, it, yeah. is it more exciting to climb the tower, or am, am I a mariner? You know, and you can tell your own story, or you can play smart. You clearly played smart because yeah. that one was pretty obvious. Yeah. Actually, I mean, the agility thing is pretty obvious, but the rowing that could have just as easily been a smart thing because it you don't really take it doesn't take a lot of strength to row. To be honest, right. that could have been a smart yeah. thing. And in fact, it's actually kind of tricky to row a boat when it boils right down to it. You're going backwards. You can't see where you're going. But anyway, <laughs> so we rowed around the boat. He now has a strength challenge. It's a regular one. If it had been a hard one, that means I would have gotten to roll an extra die in my attack. And mm -hmm. if it was an easy one, he would have gotten to roll an extra die in his defense. But as it's a regular, so we, neither of us gets a bonus. So we are now ready to begin playing the game. We have a strength challenge. Now, that starts with me. Now, I didn't mention this, but in the same way that Jason – oh, right around, let's pan on down so we can see the game now again. D -d -d, there we go. Does that look good, Jason? I can't quite make it out. Yep, that, that looks good. Cool, cool, cool. All righty. So in addition to Jason, he got to choose um, his starting speciality, uh, Titan, so he's extra good at being strong, the, the, the ne'er-do-well or the, the, the goody-two-shoes. He's got the starting equipment. I got four starting creatures, which were drawn randomly – from my level one creature deck. I didn't have any choice in it. So I have got the Devouring Swarm, the Crystalline Horror, the Flesh Binder, and a Gibbling. And now, as the Dungeon Master, the game doesn't call them Dungeon Masters. I'm sure I have a different term. because uh, probably... Dungeon. Dungeon Lord. But the Dungeon, dungeon Lord, Master. yes, of course, because probably yeah. Dungeon Master is copyrighted along with the <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Right, so I, as the Dungeon Lord, I now choose which of my four minions is going to run interference against Jason. And um, I, I, the interesting choice I have is, let's look at this Devouring Swarm again. The Devouring Swarm 
it's going to let me roll one red die. And the more dice I roll, the, the more chance I have to really push it adjacent. Uh, you know, the flesh binder, on the other hand, he lets me roll two blue dice. Blue dice are not as good as red dice, but heck, twice as many dice can't be bad. But you'll also notice each of these creatures has different um, skills. The devouring swarm is good against strength and agility. So, if I, since we're in a strength test, if I play a creature that has a strength icon, I will get to do their special ability as well. And as it happens, three of my four characters have strength icons. So that's something Jason has to bear in mind. He wants strength uh, adventures to happen because it benefits him, but right now it benefits me too because three of my four creatures are good with strength. The only one that isn't is the Gibbling. He is smart and he is agile, so I've got him if I need some smart based stuff. But anyway, so I'm going to pick one of these guys to run interference. Let's see, and, I, and I'm going to look at it. So the Flesh Binder, his thing is, if I win the encounter we're about to have, I will get to force Jason to exhaust one of his abilities, so he will lose it for the rest of this card. If my Crystalline Horror, if that's the one I send and it wins, then Jason's fortune um, limit is reduced by one. So his maximum you know, fortune ha size goes down which is not uh, that big a deal. Um, and the Devouring Swarm, if I do that, if the hero has two or more exhausted equipment cards, um, which he doesn't, we're starting out. So now is not a good time to send in the Swarm. Later on, when David's used up some stuff, that's the good time to hit him with the Swarm. So right now, I think, we're going to bring out the Flesh Binder, who has, we're going to show it to you one more time, the Medal of Pain. All right, so what I do is I tap it or exhaust it. Very important, we can't call it tapping. Um, <laughs> Although, I'm going to call it tapping. I'm sorry. I, I, that's what I've always called it. I'm going to call it. I tap I the card. Uh. And um, now, if I win this encounter, I will get to force it, one of Jason's equipment to be tapped. Now, the interesting thing is that just means he's probably going to want to tap his stuff before I force it to be tapped. We'll see how that goes. Um, all right. So, now, the, the Flesh Binder lets me roll two blues, because that's what it says. And um, I, by default, always get to roll two blacks, because I am the evil dungeon lord. So, of course, I've got my two black dice I get to roll. And I get to roll these. And, um, that, and, that, and that's going to start out. Now, I have the potential. Oh, wait. Jason, we totally forgot something. The As cards. part of setup. In addition to me getting my creatures, Jason getting his stuff and his thing, we also get a hand of two special cards. I forget what they're called. Event cards or something like that. Um, yeah, I think the heroes are called power cards. I don't remember what the yeah. dungeon lords are. Like so anyway, yeah. I happen to have two power cards in my hand that I can play, and Jason has no idea what they are. Now, Jason has two cards as well, and I'm going to flash them at the camera, but I am not looking. You have to trust me, I am looking away, but I am letting Jason <laughs> see what he's got in his hand. Okay. And, then, you know, you, and so you can go and grab them. So you got those? Okay. I got those. All right, so I'm just going to leave these here. And um, so this is Jason's hand of two cards he's got in addition to all his other stuff. I have no idea what he might throw at me, but he could throw that stuff in. So let me look at what I got here. Now, I'm just going to come right out and tell you. I mean, obviously Jason wouldn't know this, but you guys want to know what kind of choice I have. I happen to have got a war drum and a spirit gem. Now, the interesting thing about these cards are um, it costs – remember how we have this fortune, which is basically money? I've got five. Jason's got like a billion, whatever it is. It <laughs> costs fortune to play these cards. And my cards, if it's a gloomy, nasty world, it would cost me one. If it's a sunny, happy world, it would cost me two. So since the world is gloomy right now, I can play my cards for cheaper than normal. So that's good. And let's see. Now, this one is, the Spirit Gem, if Jason kill, and Jason shouldn't know this, but I'm just letting you guys know. If Jason wants to take off his headphones so he's not cheating, that's good. I can. Uh, he's a good man, folks. So, um, well, of course, he's looking at the screen, but we'll pretend he's not. So, if he kills one of my creatures, and, and, you know, at least I get two charges, so I can, get, I can charge up my special power again. So, if I see one of my creatures about to die, I'm going to hold on to this until later. The War Drum, let's see. This I can play during, while I'm rolling my dice. I get an additional blue die for each wound on my creature. So this is not good right now because none of my creatures are wounded. But as Jason starts beating up my creatures, these are both going to be good cards to pull out. Jason, come on back. All right. All right. And he's played the game before. He probably knows what they are anyway. But that's okay. I mean, this isn't a super deep game, but it's good to have, you know, a couple of cards in your back pocket. Jason's got a couple. He might throw them at me. Now, I'm going to go on ahead and roll, and let's see what I get. I am rolling to get swords, as many swords as I can. I want to put Jason in the ground. Let's see what happens. All righty. I got 
a double sword, a single sword, a blank, and a blank. Yeah, but what do you have? Like, um, it's there's two blanks on these blues, right? So there's yep. a thirty percent chance of failure. So that was lame. So I've got three swords, but there's a couple other things. This sword also has a charge icon. Now that means I can charge back up my superpower. And now I'm already starting to kick myself because before I rolled, if I had chose to use my Forge Master superpower. I would have gained, and I can do this now. I can do it anytime I want to kind of supplement. So I should have done this beforehand, but I didn't. But anyway, I, this is my roll. I'm not very happy with only a total of three. At the moment, my charges are full, so I can't recharge. So I ignore this charge, unfortunately. But I am going to go on ahead and spend my reforge. Um, all my charges are gone, and I'm going to reforge. That means I get two more dice to roll, and I can refresh a creature other than the active creature. Now, none of my other creatures are, are exhausted, so it's not a really good time to do that. But what the heck? I mean, this was such a terrible throw. I want to get some more out there and try to put the hurt. Actually, maybe I shouldn't. You got. You can also spend. You can also spend fortune. Yep, that's my other thing too. Uh, let's see. If you notice, I can spend up to two fortune to get two more blue dice. So my for my reforge power gets me two more blue dice, and my um, I can spend money. Now, you know what? Actually, before I go and reforge and and kind of waste that. Because I, nobody's tapped right now. Now is not a good time to reforge. I should wait till my guys. See, there is some strategy if you're actually thinking ahead of time, which I'm, of course, not. But I am instead. I'm going to spend two of my five fortune. So I'm down to three. And for every one I spend, and I can spend up to two, I get two more. Let's see some more swords. Or not. Let's see one sword. So that's up to a <laughs> measly four. This is not going very well for the Dungeon Lord. Now, I, I was hoping if I would have gotten two swords, I probably would have stopped. But what the heck, I am going to go on ahead. In for a penny, in for a pound. I'm going to use my reforge, which is kind of a waste, because I can, I can untap anybody else except for him. But I get two more anyway. I want to see double swords now. Come on. One more sword. Oh, Jason. <laughs> that is pathetic. All right. That's it. I can't spend any more money. I, um, I've used my special power. And unfortunately, I did this out of order because I've lost my charges. I can't recharge now. I've got my two power cards, but I'm going to save them for later because now is not a good time to use them, and I am done. I have now created a target that Jason or Saroth, the, the pit fighter, wants to hit. One, two, three, four, five. If Jason can roll six swords, he wins this encounter, and I go home like a chump. I'm, I'm not feeling good for my chances. So <laughs> now it falls on Jason. So, Jason, what do you want to do? All right, so I get... Uh, the default of two white dice, which is right. kind of like the default of the two dungeon lords. Right, so here's um, his two white dice. I'm going to roll on behalf of Jason, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. No. We agreed to this ahead of time. That's right. That's right. We did. I've, so, I have not weighted these dice down. Don't worry. They are yeah. <laughs> regulation issue. Everything's cool. Um, so then I get a red dice because of his strength on his power card. And right, because, then I will, yeah, I will also you, get a... Right. Sorry. So you get a red die. Yep. Um, and, and then I will get a blue die from the Titan. Yep. Because, yeah, because you're good at strength. So this is your yep. default role. Now, he could go on ahead and use his crushing blow right now. And um, since it's nighttime, you would add two more blue. Or you could wait. Because maybe you'll get such a good roll off of this, you won't need to waste your charge. Are, are you going to sit with this or are you going to add anything else? No, let's go ahead because... Because... To get the max there, I would have to almost have a perfect roll there to get the six um, with the dice that we have. So let's go ahead and use that crushing blow. It's kind of a okay. bummer that it's in the dark, um, yep. but it does so give me two blues. All right. Well, it's a bummer that I used my reforge and I got bubkus for it. So we're yeah. you know, we're both all right. So you, you see, you got two more. You could also spend money, but I assume you're going to wait on that uh, yeah. to see. Okay. So yeah. here we go. This is Jason's mighty roll. Everybody, I want you all to be visualizing this, right? <laughs> um, there is one failure on the red die. Uh, only one yeah. failure. And, uh, there's it seems no to come up often these. for one. All right, here we go. Nothing but blanks. Nothing but blanks. All right. Well, okay. Wow! Oh, I've totally cursed you! All right, his red. That was a one in six chance of failure. Oh, that was terrible. How, that see, is so, terrible. Three blanks. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, Jason, you failed. Oh, no. Oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? 
All right. So what I the options I have, I could spend the two fortune up to two fortune, um, yes. and I have to choose whether I want to do one or two at that time. I can't spend one and then spend one later. Correct. Um, which would be nice, but yeah, you're in for a penny, in for a pound. Right. So um, I can also, also have cards. Whatever these cards are, I have no idea. Right. Yeah, I have my two cards, and also I can tap one of my my iron sword or my torch. Um, yeah. This is the you know strategy wise it is in the first you know do i want to exhaust everything when i still got three more challenges yep yes um, i mean i should mention you know this was the card we're on you know oops, we're on the first challenge there's going to be a second challenge he's going to do one of these then we're going to flip it over there's going to be a third challenge and he is not going to get any more fortune he's not going to get to untap until we finished all three challenges so there's the the long game and the short game he's got to consider yeah so so let's go ahead and tap that torch uh, All right. and re-roll one of those blues. All right. So as you can see, tapping the torch, you may re-roll one. So that's out. And um, I'm going to roll on his behalf again. I have totally cursed this. This is a blue die. <laughs> it's not a special one. There are four successes on it. Let's just roll some blanks. That's so Ooh. not a blank. <laughs> All right. That is um, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I was at six, so you've tied me. That ain't good enough. You gotta beat me. Is that right? So, or do you have to tie me? I don't remember. Nope. I have to. I have to beat you. So oh. in order to win the challenge, so I will spend those two fortune and hope that you did not curse the last two blue <laughs> dice. <laughs> All right. So two of his. What you you had a bunch. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, you started with so much. I mean, and you're so close. There's no reason not to do it because you still got five more for the other ex okay. things coming up. Right. Right. So that's two. He's going to roll his final two. He just needs one success, but that's okay because he's going to whiff epically. Here we go. Dun, right, that's yeah, one whiff, da, da. one success. Dun, da, 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 da. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. You were successful. All right. I was. Don't gloat about it. Nobody. <laughs> All right. But, you know, at least he had to use his torch. Mm -hmm. um, and now, unfortunately, I did not win. So I do not get to use the Fleshbinder special power of forcing him to tap one of his other cards. So that's too bad. So sad. Now, <laughs> um, oh, by the way, I should have said, you know, the story was he had just, you know, he was rowing his way in. He'd open the door and then there was a dark stirring. When I actually said it's the, you know, the Fleshbinder. If I wanted to, and I really should have, I could have actually added to the story, and I said, and that's when you um, see, uh, you know, on, 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 you know, on, on the far shore, a flesh binder, and he, you know, he lets loose a, a piercing shout, and you're, and you're, you're so terrified that you have to do a test because, you know, it's not like the flesh, the flesh binder was a completely separate element. This whether. Jason won this little encounter or I won. It's all about who is going to earn experience points that we can use later in the game to level up. Um, and so it's not like the flesh binder was actually here, but it's incumbent on the player, on the dungeon lord specifically, and I for totally forgot to come up with a little story of, well, why is the flesh binder here? Because I can see what the next chapter is going to be or you know what the next thing is going to be, and so I could work that in. Let me actually look. See, where, knowing where you're going, what did mm -hmm. you do? You um, read, read the boat. All right, I see. Yeah, you rode the boat, and that means you are going to – right. So, yeah, you, you know, the story was there was a dark shape moving um, as, the, as the boat hurried along, and that's when the flesh binder burst out of the water and you know, started to try to drag you down. And that was the strength test we just did. Um, now, it doesn't matter because that's a made-up story. Whether I, you know, whether I won or not, the important thing is since Jason won, he gets one experience point. Correct. Yep. Yeah, and, one experience point. And 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 what else? What what else do you get for winning? Uh, one experience point. Oh, you know what we don't have out there is the treasure tokens. The treasure tokens. The treasure tokens. I forgot about those. Here they are. Ah, there, there you go. Them. Yep, yep, yep. Yes. So he gets one experience point, and um, that means he's going to be when you get one more experience point, you'd be able to get to level two of your strength track, or with one experience point, you could get another skill like tactician or weapons training, which you'll be able to do at the end of the round. Actually, it's three, five, and seven experience three, points. Three, five, and seven. Level. Yep. Or, no, to isn't it? Up. No, it's, it's one more than your current level. So since you're at level one, it costs you two to get to level two, and I think it's four to get to level three, right? No, look at the top left-hand corner of the skill set. I'm pretty this sure This is it's why three. it's good to have Jason here. I will trust him implicitly. Okay. So, but three, you're earning three, three, five, and seven. Now for you to level up your oh, minions. Oh, that's... 
That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. If I had earned the experience point, I could use it to turn my level ones into level twos, my level twos into level threes. Yeah. Um, right. I, I forgot. There's a different scale. I was thinking of the monster scale. But anyway, yeah. so you got an experience point and you get to draw from the chicken cup of doom <laughs> two treasures. And let's see, you got, I don't know if you can see it, a, a wound and yeah. a dark light meter and a, what do you call it, a, another fortune. So okay. Jason gets to pick one of these. So whichever one I don't pick, you get a choice of that and drawing one more. Right. So. Effectively, there's a third one coming. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. Jason doesn't know what this is yet, but effectively, once he picks one of these, I will get to, you know, so if he chooses the wound, I'll get to choose between this and whatever this is effectively, because yeah. I'm going to draw another one out of the cup after he's done choosing. Yeah. So we will go with the shift and the, uh, all right. Uh, fortune and the, and the, and the fortune. So you have yeah. given yourself another fortune. You are rich, rich, rich. I tells you. And the, uh, it has now become a glowing dungeon instead of a clouded dungeon. And so that benefits him across the board for spending for other stuff. So this mm -hmm. is gone. And now he left me the wound option and we also have, so now I can switch oh. the darkness right back and I can draw another card or I could wound him. Let's see here. Uh, I think I'm just going to push it right on back and I'm going to give myself another special <laughs> card. So it is still a dark, damp dungeon. And so nobody <laughs> took the wound. I could have wounded um, Jason directly. He could have wounded my flesh binder. And if he um, eventually kills the flesh binder, that's another way that he can get experience points. Right. So these are all gone. And there's still a whole bunch more stuff here in the cup that we'll draw later. Uh, and, right, so that's it. You won. You got an experience. You got first dibs. You left me something, but I got something good, too. And the interesting thing is, whether you win or lose, everybody's kind of a winner. The game is very, very generous. Yeah. Um, I think in part maybe to, like, you know, kind of combat runaway leaders. Even if somebody gets really, really lucky, you know what? Everybody's getting something good every round. Yeah. Right. So right. that was it. We have finished the first of the, of the three adventures that are going to be on this card, which is the first of three cards we'll have to go through. And after we've gone through all those cards, then we will have the final encounter where we go through my own personal deck where I come from out of the shadows and fight him directly, mano y mano. But I think I'm going to stop right there, folks, because that gives you, and my hair's gone crazy, that gives you a basic idea of, of how this goes. Um, basic, oh, actually, no, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go one more. Let's see. So, Jason did it. He got his experience point. He, um, we, we both got our rewards. And now, oops, I dropped my mic. Bring this back up. <laughs> oh, I am so professional. Alrighty. So now, as you recall, last we left our hero, there was a dark shape moving under the boat. You, you hurry along. You, you had your little encounter. And now that that's over, Jason has another choice. Jason, you, you've made it inside. Would you like to search the upper floor or would you like to explore the storeroom? Hmm. Neither one sounds very good. Let's explore the storeroom. Store All right. Room. Okay. Let's see. Should we stop now? Let's stop now. Let's, you, let's just read what out. that. Just read that. What that is, and then that okay. kind All of. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, right. I hadn't done this one yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. So, exploring the storeroom. The storeroom is piled with crates holding luxury goods left behind long ago. You know what this means, Jason. <laughs> um, opening each of the dusty crates, you quickly search for any loot before trouble finds you. Nice. And what that means is you're going to draw two treasure cards. Oops. Two treasure cards. We don't know what they are, but these are at stake because we are about to have our second encounter. So there are two icons in the Explore the Treasure Room. Uh, we've got the treasure, which means two treasure cards come out, which is what we're going to be encountering over, and Book Smarts, which, as we all know, is Jason's Achilles heel. Mm. Now, he's lucky. It's an easy Book Smarts, um, so he gets, he gets a slight advantage there. But if you'd like to find out if Jason is going to be up to the task, because, of course, I've still got three bad guys. I've got my Gibbling. I've got my Crystalline Horror. I've got my Devouring Swarm. They're going to run interference and try to prevent him from you know, getting what he wants out of these treasures. And if you'd like to see that and watch us continue through this adventure card, you can hit the little eye up in the, you know, the top corner of the screen and go to the extended playthrough. Or you can go to Final Thoughts, where Jason and I will talk about all things falling. And I will let, give you five, four, three, oh, I don't want to flip anybody off, two, <laughs> one. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's hard. One. Okay.